Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, thank you for allowing us this opportunity to present our project at this uh, high level uh, forum. My name is Chichekam Krongo. I represent the Development Bank of Southern Africa. With the time given to us, I'm going to give you an overview of where, who we are as the bank, our involvement in the program, and the approach that the South African government has taken in the delivery of development. We'll also uh, share with you what this project is all about and its opportunity for scaling up at the region. And the region, in this case, I'll keep referring to the region, meaning the African continent. The Development Bank of Southern Africa is a national development Government Finance Institution, wholly owned by the South African government, um, with the sole mandate to uh, promote economic development and growth and human resource development and inst institutional capacity in, the, in South Africa, primarily in the regions of the Southern African Development Community and to an extent in the rest of the continent. Our main focus is the Development Bank of Southern Africa. It's to cover our main mandate, rather, is to cover the whole of Africa. Um, but the bank also focuses mainly on South Africa. The region is Sadak and some few priority countries outside the, the, the region um, in, in the continent. <clears throat> the bank has come to understand the pro development problem in the region. Um, uh, being that member states are battling with planning. And we've also come to understand that uh, financing is not the biggest of the problems, but the options of bankable pipeline of projects is the biggest problem across the region. The capacity to deliver and implement projects by the intermediaries, um, the state organs, uh, has become one of the limitations that undermines the pace at which development happens. As a result, the DBSA has structured its value proposition to respond to a full value chain of infrastructure development delivery. And that value chain um, recognizes and positions us to provide planning, preparation, and financing and project delivery capability to the intermediaries that we serve. And we also recognize the weaknesses in the, our intermediaries, and those weaknesses relate especially to the, their institutional strength and the human resource development. As a result, we have structured our value proposition to provide a full a bouquet of services stemming from planning, preparation, financing, and uh, uh, building and maintenance of the infrastructure that we provide to our intermediaries. And the sectors that we primarily cover relate to energy, transport, ICT, water, and sanitation. In South Africa, we also pay specific attention to education, housing, uh, and housing delivery in support of the, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the South African government. We, COVID has exposed the fault lines of development in South Africa, and I guess in the region and, and probably globally as well. COVID has exposed government development um, uh, fault lines, especially the backlogs in service delivery infrastructure in the sectors of energy, health, water, sanitation, and transport. It has also exposed the glaring inequalities in the distribution of infrastructure between rural and urban and spaces. An example here being that the best health, health facilities are not in the areas that are, that are that rather the, the, the best health, health facilities are in areas that are less populated, and health facilities in the rural and poor communities in particular 
are not having the underlying support basic infrastructure, such as water, roads, sanitation, etc., etc. But COVID-19 has also exposed the misalignment of government and its operations, both vertically and horizontally. Uh, this misalignment uh, uh, find much expression and the fault lines find my, much expression, especially in planning and prioritization of service infrastructure, uh, budgeting and the execution. In response to these fault lines, the new administration and government in South Africa came up with a, what they regard as the new delivery of services and, 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 and development. And we refer to it as the all of government approach. That all of government approach finds expression um, in the metros as well as in the district government spaces. The all of government uh, approach that it seeks to reorganize the state accountability and coherence to better address poverty, inequality, and unemployment. It is a metro and district oriented planning. This approach reorganizes the way government has always operated. Government has always operated at the center. In other words, national government has always parachuted itself in the spaces of the cities and in the spaces of other local uh, government uh, entities. The new approach seeks to ensure that it emphasizes the centrality of cities and district government as coordinating structures of development and narrows the distance between people and government. In other words, it seeks to bring government and government delivery closer to where people are. It's a practical reinforcement also of cooperative governance through a more cohesive system of programmatic planning, budgeting, and implementation to bolster the development impact that needs to be achieved. Bringing all of government to the city and bringing all of government priorities and capacity closer to where development and people are. It is anchored on the development of the what government has come to call one plan, and that one plan is centered in the metro. It is centered in the district space. And it is, it is also going to act as an, an intergovernmental plan, bringing together both vertically, national, provincial, and local government, and private sector priorities into one plan. And it will also guide, it's a strategic framework that is going to guide investment and delivery in the district and metro spaces. In other words, society and people are going to feel government at the metro and district space. But it's also a society-wide social compacting. In other words, because the process of getting into a metro one plan and a district one plan is going to involve all of society, uh, the social impact that will be achieved through that process would have brought people and government as close to each other, as close together as possible. In so doing, that social impact will unlock development and economic opportunities that are very close to the people. In other words, we are localizing the national development plan and priorities and making them to find expression at a local level. And people in that, in that sense will have found and felt 
national and provincial government at a local space. And this is government, this is also government's response to the new normal that has brought, been brought to bear by COVID-19, where shared, shared collaboration and genuine partnership are needed to tackle the post-COVID socioeconomic shocks and veracities. When we got the invitation to participate in the Paris Peace Forum, we thought we've got something to share with the global community that is emerging as a model that brings government to the people and emphasizes the importance of local government, cities and district governments um, as the centers of coordinating development of all of government. The Development Bank of Southern Africa has earned the profile of being a trusted partner in development. In government, the South African government, therefore, in the rollout of the district development model, appointed the DBSA to help to pilot the rollout of the district development model. The intention is to develop um, the technology-driven information management system that will seamlessly integrate the multi-level and multi-sectoral planning process of all of government and non-government. The budgeting process and bring together the budgeting data and the COVID-related data that <clears throat> rather the COVID-related, COVID-19 related data in order to determine the appropriate and targeted responses to the pandemic, thus addressing the key infrastructure backlogs that have been exposed by the COVID-19 and the economic recovery interventions that are required to find expression as close as possible to where people live. The integrated develop the information management system that we are that we are using as the coordinative mechanism uh, through our national uh, disaster management center is the system is, is the system that is going to overlay all of the information that are related to planning and all the information that are related to that is related to budgeting implementation monitoring and reporting, and reporting about all of government activities and private sector supported development programs that find expression at the city and the district government spaces. We think that this system has the potential to find to impact at a large scale. It is a tool for the short-term interventions that we have come to implement as part of government's risk-adjusted strategy with a pot potential to scale up. It will be a tool that will use technology in the form of the information management system to allow us to spatially reference short medium and long-term interventions, and also allow us to spatially reference all of the programs and projects related to infrastructure in the country. And it will also give us an opportunity for real-time decision-making and the ability of government to correct the impact that is realized on an ongoing basis and revise our plans in real time. It is a programmatic approach to all of government that is going to enable government to ultimately tackle the fault lines that have been exposed by the, the COVID-19 related to where is poverty concentrated, where is unemployment concentrated, how do we deal with inequality which has 
got to find manifestation of a period and the period in which government, private sector, and all of society have been planning in, a, in silos and in a manner that is not integrated. We think again that the scale, the scaling of this approach can as well find expression, not only in South Africa, in the desire to integrate the region through planning and in the desire to integrate the region. We think that this operating model can be able to help us broaden the integration, the, the planning of the region, in the, rather in the region, and budgeting in the region, and implementation of infrastructure in the region that will help us improve and scale up the regional integration, which is mainly part of the, the aim of the, 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 the bank's um, approach to providing development finance. It can as well help us to assist a social compacting between government and society, not only in South Africa, but across the, the, the region as well, a model that will help us to accelerate service delivery across the region. We think that there are benefits as well, not only to South Africa and the region, but we think that, that the global community can learn from this, this, this program as well, where all of government work together in a system or a, an approach that we have come to call we are all in each together uh, as society. And it's a model that we think can be shared in this, in, this, in this forum with the rest of the world. I'll be glad together with my colleagues that are here, that I work with, um, to take questions um, and comments uh, and advisory um, based on the presentation and the project that we've just presented. Thank you very much, and thank you once again for allowing us an opportunity to share with you, with you this imaging model uh, uh, in South Africa. Thank you very much. What has been the impact of the COVID-19 on South Africa? How the COVID-19 has affected the project? So in terms of the COVID-19, um, we have approximately over 750,000 people that have been infected with COVID-19 and just over 20,000 deaths um, in the country. It is very sad um, you know, to lose our fellow country uh, people, but I think the South African government has taken a very uh, a proactive approach. Um, initially, we went down into hard lockdown for two months, and we used a lockdown level system where we eased the lockdown levels based on, on the readiness of our healthcare system. So when we were in hard lockdown, uh, we made sure that uh, the country prepared its healthcare system to deal with the, to deal with the wave. I think we had uh, lots of collaboration between the South African government, civil society, nonprofit organizations, um, together with scientists. Um, and I think the approach that we used is that COVID-19 affects everyone. Um, it, is, it doesn't discriminate. Um, in the short term, we used the, the National Disaster Management Center to isolate areas where water and sanitation was a problem. As you know, washing of hands and um, and, and uh, taking safety protocols was key in um, fighting the virus. So we used the NDMC center to isolate hotspots and ensure that the basic infrastructure was sorted out. Long term, what we want to do is make sure as part of the, the, the all of government approach to EDM, we build the healthcare services and infrastructure in the right places and we have a coordinated infrastructure. Um, yeah, so in a nutshell, that's how COVID-19 has affected us and how we are able to use the system to develop the short-term interventions.
Just in addition to my colleague's response, your next, your other question was, where will you intervene? Which locations? Can you give concrete examples of future interventions? The approach of the model, which is new in South Africa, will naturally have a few high level risks that are going to have to be managed. One of those is obviously the fact that the one plan approach centered in the district and the cities is new to South Africa. It's naturally going to disrupt the old system of planning that is that is separated between the various spheres of government. And also it's new to South Africa that private sector for, will get involved in the planning processes. We think that, that those are the challenges we're going to have to deal with, but the areas which we have started with are the areas, one, that have been exposed by the COVID-19 and the uh, fault lines. One, it's areas where we have got, uh, huge mining operations and where the local economies are highly impacted by the mining operations, but yet are surrounded by poverty across the line. And the question that we are answering through the one plan program is how can we ensure that there is integration between what private sector is doing in the spaces and what government plans to do in the spaces and how these programs can impact on dealing with inequality, poverty and job creation in the spaces. And so that is the experimental area that we are doing. What has been exposed and what we've already started dealing with is we have come to know that in those spaces, there are areas where you have got a high concentration of people, but you have got low and poor the, the rollout of water infrastructure, and, and, and energy, and transport related. So the short-term interventions were aimed at ensuring that these areas that are highly affected by lack of infrastructure, they become the new priorities. And we've seen new jobs, we've seen new rollout of infrastructure that integrates the urban and the rural areas, that integrates the poor and the, and the, and the people who are highly privileged. And for the first time, we're seeing the emergence of um, an alignment between private sector and public sector planning. We see public sector commitment to programs that they would historically not prioritize. And, 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 and we think that with the scaling up of the programs across the country, each region will be, developed, will be different. But the economic opportunities that are coming to be exposed by the fact that we are able to see the niche markets that are going to come out of each and every area uh, is a new is the new uh, uh, approach that government is going to be taking in the various places. It's too early to start to claim uh, the benefits of the program, but the, the potential is starting to drive uh, the goodwill of all the parties that are involved in the spaces. What are the future interventions? The future interventions will vary from area to area, and we think that there are areas where we should take advantage of the opportunities that agriculture-driven um, uh, markets are going to bring to bear. We also think that the ocean economy in certain areas has, has been underplayed, and all of these niche opportunities that have not been exploited because of poor integration of planning poor integration of prioritization and poor integration of execution are uh, the, the, uh, the future interventions that are going to emerge with, uh, with the planning and, and, and budgeting together. The idea is to increase regional integration in Southern African development community. Our biggest neighbors here include, among others, Zimbabwe, Zambia, 
uh, Swaziland, Lesotho, etc., etc. These are regions that are currently operating um, as the various individual countries, although the movement of people does not recognize that we are different countries. People recognize that we are one space. We have not exploited the opportunity of improving uh, infrastructure that integrates the region and uh, take advantage of regional tourist opportunities that are there. And I think that with the success, if so proven, of the model in South Africa, it is a huge opportunity for expanding the model to the region of Southern Africa. But it's equally an opportunity of expanding the model across the various regional communities in the continent as well. And that is the future goal of the program. Clearly, funding is going to be the biggest challenge, but with the bank and the other uh, uh, development finance institutions, global finance institutions that are based in South Africa, Equat Regional Offices in South Africa, we think that if we plan, if we prepare a huge pipeline of projects that integrate the region, funding opportunities will be there for regional programs and projects that are going to be funded by all of the financing institutions that find the expression in the region and globally. Thank you, colleagues. I think in terms of uh, conclusion, the district development model is a private public partnership. It's about taking hands together to do the best for our fellow countrymen. I think um, our country deserves the best in terms of service delivery. We had a very troubled past, um, and this model seeks to uh, create a social compact of working together because we are all in it together. And that same model of social compact can resonate in other developing countries in SEDAC. It is also a model, a global model for how government and society can work together to advance the needs of the people of the various countries and around the globe. Thank you, colleagues. Thank you. Thank you.